Greetings, Sim Captains, and welcome aboard the Douglas DC-3 Dakota, an Aeroworks beta release that is freeware for X-Plane. Before we begin the cockpit segment of this tutorial, we need to take a quick look at the exterior of this aircraft. You'll notice wheel chocks are in place, as well as a split cargo door. You might notice this is not exactly the commercial configuration. We have bench style uh, military seating there, and that's because this is actually configured more like the C-47 military variant of the DC-3 none of which will really bother you too much from a flying standpoint but if you go back in the cabin this is what you're going to see alright let's get started the checklist I'm using came out of uh, FSX I've gone through and stricken a number of items that didn't necessarily apply and I'm using a number of notes from Aeroworks uh, regarding a couple of features that they have not activated yet so here we go on the pilot's overhead panel, you'll notice we have a lot of lighting switches, seat belts, the typical exterior lights. Our inverter and radio master are there. You'll notice the radio master has started in the on position. Moving over to the first officer's overhead panel, we have our battery switch, a prop feather, and we have starters, primers, fuel pumps, generators. Basically, our engine start controls are up here. Located between captain and first officers we have the magneto switches which you will also need for engine start let's look at the main panel you have your standard instruments looking down oh turn the yoke back on normally it starts up with the yoke on you can make that disappear by pressing Y on the keyboard or reappear there's also above the clock here a hide and unhide yoke button uh, there's quite a few keyboard shortcuts that are going to help you out if you're in here, and Y is one of them. Your radio, uh, navigational and comm, as well as your autopilot transponder are all nicely hidden behind the yoke. It's very hard to access them with that yoke right there. Alright, so let's jump on over to our throttle quadrant. You'll notice there's no real pedestal behind it with radios. It's walk on in but there are a number of items hidden down underneath this is obviously not a very accessible area in flight the good news is you really don't need most of these things except for this one this is your parking brake in this off pull to turn it back on you can usually also toggle that with B or set up a uh, key on a joystick to operate your parking brake all right, let's jump over. Wrong one. From the first officer station, you'll notice we have the fuel gauge. You're going to want to know where that is. Uh, you click, and you'll see you scroll through. So the left main and right main have fuel right now. Auxiliaries are empty. Okay. Back in the center here, right where the windows meet, is your compass and you can see our heading is just a little off from due south um, so it will be about 181 at the moment we're going to need that in a minute because we do need to set up our compasses just like you might in a Cessna the uh, gyro compasses will need aligned all right let's get turning things on here On the overhead panel for the first officer, in the red, turn on the battery. We're going to jump outside for a moment. The battery is also rigged on this to close your door and to remove the wheel chocks. In flight, if you toggle off that battery, the door 
will open, but wheel chocks will not appear. Let's go back inside. The battery is on. Checklist I have says next to turn on the generators. Not quite sure why we're turning them on before the engines, but that's what this list has. You would want to check that your gears down, your flaps are up, all of the usual things were put away correctly. Uh, the plane does start up in that configuration, so we're going to jump ahead. Fuel quantity, we've already taken a peek at. We have some fuel on board. Radio master switch was over here on the pilot's overhead. The radio master defaults to on. Fasten seatbelt and no smoking signs. We're going to turn those on. There is no, uh, no chime like we have in a modern airliner. Beacon light, turn that on so that alert anyone nearby will be starting engine soon. Next, our engine and propeller areas need to be clear. You can look out the window and we have clear props. Next, look at our throttle quadrant. We're going to crack the throttles open and we need to set our mixture to auto rich and this is where we need to talk a moment about AeroWorks notes. The DC-3 is set up for an auto rich, auto lean. Unfortunately, that has not actually been implemented yet. So you're going to run this mixture just like you might on any other aircraft uh, with a completely manual mixture. So I have started this up at auto rich, so if you didn't know, as I did not when I first flew it, you would probably be fine. But we're going to run it up the whole way. When we get to cruise today, we're going to need to lean it ourselves, which might accidentally end up near that auto lean line or someone else, somewhere else, sorry. Okay, next we need to go up top, move to the center. We're going to turn on the magnetos for the right hand engine. Zooming in on the switch, we've got a left and right magneto and a both. These switches do operate with the scroll wheel on your mouse when you see the arrow. Okay, right magneto to both. Next, looking at that uh, first officer's overhead, we're going to turn on the fuel booster pump. Next, the right primer switch as required. that does not stay on, you just hold it as needed. And then our start switch. You can see amps coming up on the generator. Let's go outside. We have an operating engine. Alright, next, the oil pressure. Let's take a peek. The oil pressure gauge is located just past the throttle quadrant. See, we have uh, engine RPMs, manifold pressure, and here's our oil pressure. It's single gauge with two needles, and they are labeled with a two and a one. We're in the green on oil pressure. It looks good. Next, uh, we can turn off that fuel booster pump. We're going to turn the left magneto to both. We're just repeating the same procedure here for the other engine. We're going to turn our fuel booster pump to on. Our primer switch as needed. And then our starter. Alright, we've got our warning there for the gyro directional compass not being aligned. I'm going to leave that warning on because it's a nice reminder. All right, engines are good. Let's go, uh, sorry. Oop. Oh, darn. That's not good. I accidentally uh, leaned our right-hand engine there to cut off. So we're going to need to restart it. Uh, first, let's check that oil. Oil on number one is good. We can turn off the booster pump on the left. I've turned back on the right booster pump. And let's restart the right hand engine. Alright, 
Gotta be careful with those click regions. There we go. Now I have found some of these handles to be a little finicky. Uh, for example, if you can see right now, I'm pulling back. It's not going anywhere. When I move forwards, look how it's traveling backwards. Uh, because of the weird dynamic of that, sometimes it does what you expect, sometimes it doesn't. I just rigged it up to uh, some of the spare buttons on the joystick here. And there we go. Problem solved. I can adjust that mixture without chance again. Now you might notice the uh, fuel pressure is in the green on number two but not number one. It's because I have not yet turned back off that fuel pump. It'll drop back down and then they'll match. Alright, left and right engines are running. The fuel booster pumps are off. The oil has been checked. And now I'm going to go up and turn on the inverter. It's on the pilot's overhead by the radio master warning light is off. Okay, before taxi, our nav lights are coming on. Go out and check. Green and red. They're on. Our altimeter will need set. We're at Tucson International in Arizona. Rather than dialing up the radio, I prefer to just go into maps here, click details of the airport I'm at. Here's our pressure setting, 2 9 or 9 or 1. Alright, um, the altimeter, very small here, so sometimes I like to get particularly close so I can read it. So that should be 990, and, oh, wrong way. Go. Let's call that 2991, and then want them to agree. Two nine nine one. All right. Next, uh, let's align our compasses. I think we decided we were at one eight one, just slightly off from due south. We'll start with. Oops, sorry. I have that viewpoint set pretty far back, so when I move around, sometimes uh, the piers were inside the seat back. It's just where I like the default view to be. Uh, 180. I think that looks right. Okay, this is part of your autopilot here. On the bottom, you need to set this one to match. You're going to use this large knob underneath the dial. Uh, let's talk about this while we're looking at it. In the top right corner of this little segment, you have a knob labeled rudder. This is actually adjusting the heading for the autopilot. If you were in uh, HDG, there's the autopilot down here with the radios. If you were to click HDG for heading hold, it would snap to whatever you have set here. However, that is based upon you having an accurate compass below it, so make sure you set this one correctly, and that will be your heading. All right, we have set both of those compasses. We can get rid of that message now. Fuel selectors. This is a very, very important detail. I'm glad I read the uh, AeroWorks notes. There's two fuel selectors, one for the left engine and one for the right. These little circular discs and knobs here. Oh, jeez, I need to be very careful. I keep accidentally toggling things. We don't want to move. That's a nose rudder adjustment. Have I re-zeroed it? I think we're about where we want to be. Okay. Uh, sorry for that detour. You can see right now it's at left auxiliary. And you have left main, right main, right auxiliary, and off. Uh, left main does what it says. Right main does what it says for both engines. The co-pilots on the right-hand side does not function at this time. So you want to stick with the captain's side. Uh, you don't actually turn this handle. You just click into the 
uh, display where the letters are and it will snap to it. If I clicked off, it's going to cut this engine. We don't want that. Also, important note, right auxiliary is also sort of a dummy spot that will also cut fuel to both engines. And seeing as we've already accidentally restarted an engine, I'm not going to toggle that. Okay, our fuel is set to both tanks for both engines using the pilots. And so we've pretty much completed our before taxi. We have a working uh, ship. All right, I pulled up a few items for us to actually begin a flight. This is just a tutorial, so I'm not necessarily going to complete it for you. But I have picked a uh, navigational point for us. It's the Gila Bend VOR, which is 116.6. We'll dial that up here in a second. And you can see using the Avitab and Navigraph charts where we are parked at uh, Tucson. The wind setting there, you can see conditions are wind 300 at 8 knots. So uh, taking off from, oh sorry, I've got a window in my own way here. Runway 29 left should be appropriate. 8,408 feet for a DC-3 is uh, plenty of runway. If you've only been flying the jets, this thing is just going to kind of float right on into the air. Alright, so we're taxiing to runway 29 left. While we're doing that, let's talk about navigational radios at the moment. We're going to dial up 116.6 on the nav. There we go. Now, should you desire or need, if you're not around VORs, there is a hidden GPS here right under this little plate that says Model A3 Gyro Pilot. Click that, and there you go. You've got a Garmin 530. All right, we've arrived at the end of 29 left. We're just gonna turn ourselves around here. Before we line up, we can do a little engine run up. As per this checklist, we're going to increase the throttle to 1500 RPMs. Alright, 1500, and now uh, we could check feathering, generators, and the magnetos. Magnetos are on the overhead. Just switch through them and you're watching. You don't want more than 100 RPM drop on each. See the number two is a little below number one. There, in case you can, oh, what am I bumping? Same there, now the number one's low. All right, let's call that run up complete. On runway two nine left. There we flaps, are. All right. Flaps. For takeoff checklist, parking brake. <laughs> if you want to go look for it, it's down here. It's pulled and on. I just used to be on the keyboard. Uh, landing lights. Let's turn those on. 
I still have the taxi lights on, which are nose mounted, pretty cool looking there. Next, the prop should be at a high RPM. So if you're looking here, P is your prop. Basically, the prop uh, at a high RPM at the front here, it's not going to have as much bite on the air, a little less force on, on the engine. Two, nine, left. On runway, Later, we'll two, be nine, drawing left. that back. <laughs> the x ross on a DC-3. All right, so we have the prop set to high RPM. Our mixture should still be rich. Got it full forwards. Pedo heat should be on. Let's go up to the captain's overhead. Pedo heat is on. Carb heat, de-ice as required. There's no need for ice, we're in Arizona. Flight controls, free and correct. Check. Cow flaps open halfway, not going to worry about that. Elevator trim. Trim wheel is in a fairly normal location. The little red slider is your indicator. I'll put it to center right there, zero degrees. Next transponder down here. Remember to move your yoke out of the way. It's on the whole way up this uh, test, so now we're on. All right, next for takeoff. Before we do it, because it's a pain to talk through this, uh, the checklist has us increasing the prop to 2,750 RPM. At 45 knots, we're going to push forward on the yoke to try and lift the tail to a horizontal view. Then our V1 is going to be about 80 knots and rotate at about 85. Quite honestly, it's just going to float off the runway. You won't need to think about it too terribly much. At that point, once we're climbing, we're going to retract the gear. On runway, two, nine, left. On runway, and we're two, going nine, to change left. our prop speed to try and get uh, 2,350 RPM. So 2,750 to start, and then we're going to bring back the prop to 2,350 as we're starting to uh, climb out. Oh, we've neglected something very, very important. The flaps. On the far left here, you can see a uh, parking brake warning light because it's still on. Flaps are currently fully retracted in the up position. So let's extend some flaps here. Alright, I just paused to consult the checklist I have. Oddly enough, it does not call for flaps for takeoff. Um, this plane is very large amount of lift. I don't know how big this wing is compared to the actual aircraft size. Uh, so I'm sure you can do a no flap takeoff, but for today I'm not going to. So at this point I think we're about ready. I'm going to increase RPMs to 2750. Alright, we're firewalled there, that's full throttle. I'm gonna raise my viewpoint. Here we go. Okay, there's 45, pushing down. I'm gonna adjust the viewpoint. I think we're about ready there at 75. Go, we're climbing. Let's retract the gear. Man, we are bucking all over the place, aren't we? See the gear lights? We are gear up. We want to climb at about 500 feet per minute. So I'm trying to adjust that. Okay, we're going to retract those flaps. All right, let's 
Let's dial up good year. 116.6. There we go. What do we call that? Two eight four. Remember, you want to adjust this from the top. All right, that looks like about two eight four. We'll gauge heading. use this level as pretty much an altitude hold. You'll notice it uh, went green when I clicked on it. Another way for us to do this would be to click nav and that's going to lock on to VOR nav 1. Take us to it. On our climb out, we're doing 2350. I think we can call this our cruise altitude for our purposes today. So we're going to uh, accelerate to a cruise speed of about 140 to 150 indicated. Looks like we're a little over 160 right now. We want the prop at about 2350 still there that's good so shall we try leaning the engine for the purposes of fuel economy we don't want to be using an extremely rich mixture that is unnecessary so we're going to watch this EGT temperature Just gonna pull back. Watch that EGT raise. When we find its highest indication, that is our peak exhaust gas temperature. Keep an eye on how low we're getting here. Still climbing. Once you find your peak, you're gonna go just a little bit richer than that. So we went past our peak. So the peak looked about here, right at about where auto lean is. So just as sort of a simplistic guide, it wouldn't hurt to use though. So I'm gonna go just a little bit. Oh, actually, that looks like that might be peak. That's an extra reduction. So the peak might be here. We just want to be a little bit richer than peak. So if that's peak, let's go up a bit. There we go. All right, and we have leaned our engines. Uh, a cruise altitude for a DC-3 has an unpressurized cabin, so uh, depending on what you want to do that day, 6,000 feet could be your cruise. Let's turn off our fast seat belts. And this is uh, a mainliner from the 1930s, so we can turn off the no smoking sign too. Let's take a quick tour of our aircraft. There's a lot of neat things in this cockpit. For example, these pivoting armrests. Ah, am I getting on the click zone or not? There we go. Not exactly a useful feature, but the captain and first officer's armrest both swing. On back, we have some storage areas. Cabling. You cannot access the uh, Astrodome for celestial navigation, although it is rendered on the outside. Here's our military bench style cabin. The uh, texturing in here is obviously not nearly as good as it is in the cockpit, but uh, 
it's pretty acceptable, particularly for a freeware aircraft, I think. We're still well above and beyond what uh, we deserve to expect from freeware. I mentioned to you earlier, if you turn the battery off in flight, you will still get door to open. Perhaps not the most realistic thing, but if you uh, want to pretend to go skydiving, that's uh, that's your call. Alright, let's stop messing around. The battery's back on now. Neglected to turn off our landing and taxi lights, so let's cut those out. There's also a freeware immersive sound pack for the DC-3. I will put the link to it in the description along with the link to download the AeroWorks beta. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's very easy to install and very, very impressive sound. Alright, at this time we're going to begin some descent. We're going to reduce our airspeed to 140 knots. As we begin to make our approach, <laughs> I'm going to make sure we really read our checklist. Embarrassed to say, I did a very beautiful recording of a gear up landing a moment ago, and uh, I might include that footage for you just, just as a hilarious blooper at the end. Although I didn't shoot any exterior, so it won't be that entertaining but uh, I got too caught up looking at other nonsense and skipped a pretty unforgivable checklist item there. All right, so landing lights on, booster pumps on. Speed, we wanna get down to about 125 knots. We've got our runway in sight up there, a couple miles out. So I'm going to reduce our throttle. I'm not going to start descending quite yet. We're about 4,000 feet in that airport elevation is about uh, 1,800, I believe. All right, our prop speed we wanted about 2,050 RPM, and we'll be running our prop back up to a uh, high RPM when we're about on final here. Mixture we want rich, so let's go check that. Oh, wrong one. I'm going to look out the window. Bad things happen when I'm there we go. Mixture is rich. Oh, jeez. This is why investing in a throttle quadrant probably needs to be next on my list because uh, and making those adjustments, having to look away, depending on the aircraft, is just not a very good idea. All right, we're descending about 500 feet per minute, only about 125. back the airspeed more, so reducing throttle. You can see we've got a little bug there on the airspeed indicator. Uh, your flap max is 112, so we need to get below that. There we go. Flaps one quarter. 
want to see about 105 next airspeed. There we go. Flaps to half. Gonna give us a little bit of throttle so we don't sink too quickly. We're still a ways out. Try and hold us about 95. We're getting pretty darn slow here. We do have some winds to consider. I don't know if that's going to get cut in the gear up landing chunk of the video or not so winds are 290 at 13 and this runway is runway 30 so mostly headwind a little bit of crosswind there's our 95 okay we're gonna go three quarter or full flaps I'm gonna do three quarters since we have some headwind Approaching three zero. All right, it's time for gear. We have gear light over there on the left by the flap indicator. Poke our head outside and see. I'll warn you, that gear light kind of comes on and claims it's locked, and you'll notice that they were still moving a moment ago. So uh, don't trust that light. They're not the fastest in dropping. might recall earlier I mentioned we don't want to put this on its nose so I'm gonna try not to use the toe brakes very much we want to touch down between 80 and 85 indicated airspeed rudder to deal with a tiny bit of crosswind. Get some bad frame rates right now. I heard the gear touch. There we go. And I'm going to immediately use the arrow to raise my viewpoint so I don't lose sight of the field. Now I actually have not touched the wheel brakes at all. Give it a little bit of wheel brake now. Just, just tap it. Not even half pressure. There we go. Very nice. I did forget one item there. I didn't raise that prop pitch back up to high RPM. Which we should have done. our final all right there you have it ladies and gentlemen and just for a quick demonstration if we jam those brakes even with almost no motion there you can see it's very easy to uh, put this thing over on its nose so you just need to be extremely cautious with those wheel brakes. But this is the AeroWorks DC3, a freeware beta release for X-Plane 11. The links to download it and the immersive sound pack will be included in the video description. So thank for you for joining us on Flight Brothers FT. Plan the flight and fly the plan.
Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Ow. Tutorial fail. You know why you don't hear engines anymore? Because I'm an idiot. That hurts. That hurts.